Hello, and welcome to the Kosh. I am your host, Timber Smith. And uh, like every week, once again, uh, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you uh, tuning in and listening. I love all the feedback that I do get. Um, I appreciate y'all out there in Kosh land. Um, I'm super excited about the guests that we got this week. Uh, yeah. Let's uh let's introduce him. Uh, his name is Chris Christopher Carnes. Uh, Christopher Carnes is actually one of our candidates for the Ashkosh School Board. Um, hey Chris, how you doing over there? I'm doing well, thank you. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna work on this. Uh, I'm gonna quit calling Chris Chris, and we're gonna call Chris Christopher. <laughs> it's gonna take a little practice here. All right. Um, Christopher, can you please share a little something about yourself and what is your connection to the Kosh? Yeah, so I have um, lived in Oshkosh my whole life. Um, lived uh, mostly on the west side. Uh, went to um, Oshkosh West, went to UW Oshkosh. Okay. Um, Titan? Was it? Yeah, Titan. All right. And you went to West. Was West still the, uh, I think the West used to be the Indians back we, then. We were the Indians. I think I was either the last class or the second to last class. That was the That Indians. was the Indians. Okay. Yeah. All right. And um, please, please continue. Yeah. So, um, you know, my, my connection to the city, obviously having been here the whole, you know, my whole life is, is um, mostly one of the things I, I'm passionate about is. I coach youth sports, so I'm involved in the community that way. Um, okay. On the on the board of Oshkosh United, I help coach a lot of different sports: soccer, basketball, wrestling. Oh man, you're doing the whole gambit. Yeah, that's you know what I'm gonna be honest. As somebody who has done a little, and when I say a little, I do mean a little bit of coaching. Uh, I was lucky enough. Uh, my daughter played a lot of soccer. She played soccer since the age of four. And um, kind of came up from OIS, uh, OISC all the way, you know, played United and then for uh, UW Oshkosh and was a Titan. Um, I did some coaching in OISC back in the day. Might have won a soccer Saturday or two, <laughs> you know. I love that. That was such fun and fantastic and amazing community um, camaraderie, you know. You done some soccer Saturdays? I have not. Didn't didn't play soccer as a kid, um, so I wasn't a part of it. Knew all about it. Okay. Um, but uh, no, my kids never played OISC. We jumped right into Oshkosh United. They had started their their rec league, so we had went that route. Went to the academy, and uh, and then I got the pleasure of coaching my son's U eleven um, select team, which was the first travel team. You know, at, at his age bracket, when he could actually travel around and. In place and and we had an amazing team, amazing group of parents. It was a, it was a really fun experience. Those travel teams are cool. That's a, that is a good time getting on the road. You get you a nice group of parents, yeah. find you some nice places to eat. <laughs> that's exactly it. Yeah, they yeah. all hang out in the hotel at the pool together. It's it's fun. Yeah, I, that's where I drew the line because I don't swim. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, I do I do understand what you're saying. Um, I do miss that. Um, let me just give a quick shout out to all of our, our those soccer connections in Ashkash because soccer soccer is big here and, and and I think it's important for our youth. So uh, shout out to OISC, shout out to United, uh, shout out to our Y, um, shout out to everyone, and a special shout out to all us parents who out there who take on coaching because coaching is no joke. It is underappreciated. It's it's challenging at times. It's a lot of fun, very rewarding, um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, still a fun experience. I enjoy every, every day. Yes, and let me let me give something else to those parents out there who want to jump on the coach. <laughs> you can coach too. Exactly. <laughs> I used to I used to ref at the Y when I was um, my college age. We would I would ref you know flag football, basketball, and and all sorts of stuff and. Even as, you know, when you're the ref, you, you hear it even more. You get the parents yelling and complaining. Oh, uh, I could never be a ref. That's, that's got to be the most unappreciated uh, volunteer. Or, well, you do get paid as a ref sometimes. But, not, I mean, not that, enough. Not enough. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt about that. All right. 
You ready to jump into the first segment? Absolutely. All right. First segment is called "What in the World is Going On With." Um, you start your, you start with that phrase and you end with a topic that's near and dear. So, what in the world is going on with with vaccines? So, uh, I work <laughs> I work in in healthcare. I'm a business office manager of a surgery center. Uh, so we are, you know, paying attention to that stuff intimately. You know looking at the data, making sure that we are doing what we can to stay safe. And, um, you know, vaccines are um, right now, you know, an important part of us getting back to to normalcy, to keeping our community safe. And uh, as somebody who's gotten it a while back, um, I was lucky enough. I had no side effects of any kind. Um, But even so, the side effects are minor compared to the negative impacts that, you know, COVID can cause people. So, you know, I'm a big fan. I want as many people to, to trust the science, um, to, to get those vaccines as, as soon as we can and, uh, you know, try to, to get back to somewhat of a normal life as soon as possible. I'm with you. I'm all about it. I'm, I've been lucky enough to get my first shot. Um, I'm eager for the second shot. Uh, if you've listened to a past episode, I've, I've come around. I didn't start in a place of necessarily wanting to get the vaccine, but I've come around to it. And now that I'm in the place, uh, can I just get it? But can we can we just make that happen? Um, Christopher, let me ask you, what is what is your feeling of our community and their attitudes towards the vaccine? Do you think do you think Oshkosh um, and, the, and the surrounding area, for the most part, are, are having a good attitude towards the vaccine? I guess I don't know the numbers. I know I hear certain people that are still hesitant. I have family members that still I don't know where the distrust comes in, you know, because we, most of us have vaccines in our body for, for most things, right? Smallpox, polio, that's kind of stuff went away when we started to, you know, vaccinate, you know, and, and now we have all sorts of other stuff. And we, to the point where when I was a kid, I had to deal with chicken pox and actually got shingles at a young age. Mm. Now we have vaccines for that stuff and our kids get vaccinated. But right now there's such a, a distrust even out there. It seems like it's a, it's a fairly substantial group you know, of people, um, that, that feel that way. I, I, I mean, we had some incredibly smart people that put together these vaccines and I did a lot of research listening to and reading the articles about how they tested it, what they did. Right. And even though it was a fast process, it was incredible. You know, what, what these people went through and what they did to, to help the world, you know? Well, yeah. I mean, if the whole world comes together to concentrate on something, that's going to cut time down. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. I, I think the only difference this time was politics got into this. And instead of um, just there being a universal consensus of the safety of our citizenry, right, and the safety of America and the safety of anyone, uh, citizen or not citizen, that's living here um, was lost in there. Yeah. But that should have that should have been the primary messaging, uh, regardless of belief, party, or anything else. This is just about about health and safety. Yeah, it's the same thing that you know masks. You know, I mean, politics got in the way of some things that, um, you know, the evidence is there for masks save lives, vaccines, you know, uh, save lives, and. Um, it's unfortunate, unfortunate that there's a place for politics. You know, we can talk about tax rates and, and how we respond to activities and things when it comes to that. But when it's life and death, literally, you know, I, I would, I I get disappointed to see that, you know, it was, it, it was definitely difficult to watch. Um, because I think a lot of people, even for the last year for the messaging has then filtered into vaccines and there's, there's a distrust there that I hope we get over. I do. I'm hoping so too. I, I'm not quite sure where we're at. And like you, I, I hear a little bit of all over the spectrum about it. Um, but I do think to me, there might be as more and more people do it. I think it's influencing some of the other people who were questioning it. And I also think that let's be honest, we're all tired of living like this. I, I, I think we're so eager for normalcy. Um, I think some people are going to go get the shot because they just want to get back to things being how things were. Yep. No, I, I agree. You know, my son's have a, has a birthday coming up and 
I was hoping that, and, and we're not to the place where everybody can get vaccinated, but we're almost there, you know, like if his right. birthday was in a month or two, there's a good chance we could actually have a fairly normal birthday if, That's if true. all the adults in the room had been vaccinated. We're just not quite there yet, but. Correct. Yeah. I'm with you on that. And he missed his birthday last year too, you know, no. like the way it happened, it was like everything starts shutting down and you're thinking, is this really gonna, oh, come on, we can't have to cancel his birthday. And then you're like, actually, I think we have to, you know, yeah. like we have to, it just kind of happened within, within days. And it was just, uh, you know, a lot, but yeah, like, I had that lull period too. Like when everything was really shutting down and it was starting like at the beginning of March and mid March was like when the hard line was drawn and I was still trying to figure out like, is this really like, you know, because I just don't think, uh, I think they were still exploring everything. Yep. Right. And they weren't quite sure what to tell the public. Um, I think the game changer would have been if they would have told the public that this COVID was airborne, <laughs> I think a lot of people would have been like, uh, give me a mask and I'm going to sit home. Yeah. And, you know, that took a while for that to come out. Yeah. I'm, I'm a huge college basketball fan. You know, watching the NCAA tournament is, is my favorite thing. And um, I look forward to the next, you know, four days, including today, five days when the games start. But you you're know, not that guy who takes off work to just sit and watch. Uh, <laughs> that's 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 my time. I uh, everybody does something different. You know, they some guys like to take time off for hunting and fishing. And for me, it's basketball. Bruh. <laughs> I respect that. Yeah, I got cool. a lot of friends who that this is their time of year. Yeah. And they it all shuts down and it's almost like hunting. Yeah. You know, college basketball time, there's those who hunt and there's those who, and when, when it's a uh, time for the tourney, they, they don't play. Yeah. So last year when I canceled, it was, it was devastating. It was, it was the right thing to do. And I can acknowledge that, but I can still be hurt by the fact that, you know, it, it everything shut down, you know, not only college basketball, but the world kind of went on freeze for about two and a half months before things started opening back up. And, um, you know, it's, it's important. Like for me, when you talk about basketball in my time, I think it's important for people in general. I don't think it's talked about enough, but people to take time for themselves, whatever that is, you know, yes. the self care is just, you know, along with mental health, it's stuff that what makes you happy, you know, what can you do to, to recharge your own batteries? You know, cause if all you do is take vacations that you're traveling with your family, you know, sometimes that's a lot of stress that sometimes that's more stress than the work itself. So Oh my God, you need a vacation from the vacation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> so I, I I totally agree with you on that. I think um I, you know, there was there's of course this what has happened this past year has had a set of negatives, but I also think there's some positives you can pull out of this and I think um I think there was recognition that people need to spend more time with their families. Um I think the slowing down of life was really nice. Um, you know, cause you, everything slowed down and I felt like everything was moving so fast, you know, for, for, you know, you're multitasking everything, you're running here doing this, dropping, you know, and you're doing like a thousand things and this forced everything to kind of just put the brakes on and give you time to breathe and think and have a reset. And I think as Americans, we needed that. Yeah, I, I mean, I got kids that are 8 and 12, and sometimes the pressure on making sure your kid's in every activity and at every I, you know, every place, every practice, every game, are they in everything? Are you doing everything you can for them? It's, it, it is overwhelming, and, and you want to make sure that as a parent, ultimately, that we're setting our kids up to be good people. Right. And I think that sometimes maybe, you know, you lose track of that. And even the most well-intentioned people like myself sometimes lose track of what's really the focus here because the chances of them getting scholarships for their sports or being professional athletes is somewhere between slim and none. And, right. you know, I want to have good people that are able to, you know, make the, make the world a better place when they get there. And I think that this year has, has maybe helped some people realize, you know, that and, and learned you know, more focus on, on those kind of things. So I, I agree. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And being one of those parents who used to have that dream of having a child who might make D1 in college, uh, that's a hard road to hoe yep. and an expensive one because <laughs> <laughs> you the camps and all the other things that have to you have to invest into the into that. 
um, scenario, that's that's not easy by any means. Uh, I'm going to have to agree with you 100%. All right. Um, my what in the world is going on with is what in the world is going on with this mass murder that just happened um, in Georgia um, for our Asian brothers and sisters. Um, that that just hurts. It hurts, and I just it, it, it leaves me speechless. And for watching, at least where it's at right now, for there to try to be a a narrative that this isn't doesn't have anything to do with race. You got to be kidding. Don't do that. Don't respect those. Don't disrespect those people's lives like that. It, it, you don't just happen to kill this many people of a certain race. That is a minority race. They all, almost all of them. And, and and I'm, they're still leaking information at this point. But I do believe out of the eight, six were were Asian women, and you try to say this isn't anything to do with race. So um, it does. I want people to know, out there to know that I I un, I am quite sure that our Asian brothers and sisters out there feel some kind of way. Um, I understand how you feel because uh, there's been incidents in the past that have. Uh, made me as a uh, as a black man feel some kind of way and um, just want you to know uh, we at the Kosh here you're in our thoughts we're with you we're supporting you you know I mean, and um, yeah it's it's important to realize that racism affects a lot of people in our culture and our society. everybody and and it's you know I was reading some articles after that happened when you talk about you know there's stereotypes and stereotypes are crushing to racism. You think, you know, you hear Asian American, you, you think a lot of people think one thing, you know, they're, they're not hurting, you know, that they're, um, and then you see situations like this where, you know, things, the stereotypes can be very harmful, you know, to people and, and to not shed light on, on the real situations that are happening. And it's unfortunate for the situation to happen, but I mean, it's, it's important for people to, to realize what's happening out there and to, to be aware, you know, and, you know, for, for me, education is so important and, and for my kids and, and sometimes there's not a whole lot you can do other than show your family and show your kids the right way to be, as we talked earlier, you know, like trying to make your kids good people and to make sure that, you know, these feelings don't go to the next generation, that these ideas get, you know, talked about and brought into the open and it's, it's definitely, you know, sad and, and crushing. I mean, I, I just hope that, hope that people can learn from this. Yeah. Um, I just need people to stop doing this. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, that, um, okay. it, there is a, I saw something that was like, stop the Asian hate. No, stop the mass killings. Let's not, that's where the focus should be. The focus should be at that point. Let's not put it on the, the, the side of the victims. Correct. Let's put it where it should be. The aggressors. Exactly. Stop it. That's where it should be. And if you're going to address anything, address the aggressive side of, of this problem that continues to happen. I, 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 I absolutely agree. And, and for me, it's like trying to, you know, where, where, where did it go wrong that people are this angry, this aggressive, this willing to harm other people. And, and, and that's, that needs to stop. It needs to change. Yes. It needs to change immediately. And, you know, I, 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 I hope that we, you know, I'm not sure the people that need to hear it, hear it when things happen, you know, but you know, the, the, it's it's just not okay to treat anybody like that. Well, I think we have a problem in America where if it's not in our house, yeah. we we tend to close our eyes to it 
or we don't think it, it, you know, you might look at it and say, oh, that's horrible, but that's where you, where, where it stops, yeah. you know, but it affects us all. It trinkles into places. And, and how do you know that you're not going to be the next um, subpopulation hate category? It doesn't take much. The next subpopulation hate court category, and I say this because Christopher over here is sitting with a very clean cut head, much like mine. So we're both bald brothers in in <laughs> in crime right now. And what if that's the new hate category? What if bald men is the new hate category? And somebody has feels some kind of way, and they want to go out and and mad. And I know that seems far fetched, but it's all far fetched, right? But it's that simple. It's people picking categories of things they don't like and going out and doing destructive, harmful things. Uh, it's, yeah, I, the, for a lot of people, it's, it's, it's fear. It's, it's, you know, they're, they're angry about things. And to, to take it to that point, I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely terrifying because where, where will it go next? Right. And, you know, Oshkosh is, more diverse than people realize, you know, I mean, I look at the school district and I didn't realize it till you see the numbers that, you know, when I was a, 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 in 1999, I graduated high school, high school from Oshkosh West. I swear there's probably a couple, um, black students in the whole school, you know, they're, they're, it wasn't the most diverse. And now overall there's 26% of our district is not white. That's you know, right. That's, that's significant. That's a big um, amount of people. So I, I think, you know, people um, in our community, when you said it doesn't happen in our house, we don't realize it. And I think people don't realize that it might not be in their house right now, but it might be in the house next to them. You know, our, 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 our right. it's so diverse that we need to stand together. And um, it, you know, we're, we're a small community compared to a lot of places, you know. We're, we're big and we're small. We're kind of in that middle ground, 60-some thousand, almost 70,000 people right. with a third largest university in the state. You know, we, we got a lot of, of diversity here that um, I hope that people do start looking around and realizing that, you know, it, this stuff is is here. We just may not realize. You know? Yeah. Well, I, I think people may realize, but they're ignoring it. And I, I agree with you 100%. It may not be, uh, like you said, it may not be in your house, but it's in your neighborhood. Because uh, <laughs> that's a, that's how it works. Because right now I've been in Oshkosh since '92, and I've watched the diversity transitions that have happened here. And um, you can't tell me everybody's neighborhood isn't changing in some type of capacity, right? Right. There. I mean, there's there's still a lot of neighborhoods who may not have much diversity in them, but there are many that do all over the region. So, I mean, it's something to think about. All right. That was, that's a tough subject, you know, but I, I think it's a necessary subject. Yeah. I, I for, for myself, like I, I look around the world and we talk about that and, and, and everything. It's just, you know, the world needs more empathy, you know, needs yes. more people asking questions and, and um, wanting to understand and wanting to be there for our fellow people. Can't, can't agree more. All right. You ready to jump into the next segment? Absolutely. All right. We're jumping into word associations. I'm going to throw some words at you, Christopher, and you're going to uh, tell me what comes to your mind. Will do. All right. So food. So, well, food, I mean, with the NCAA tournament around the corner, I'm thinking about a lot of, a lot of fun food to watch some, some basketball games with. So um, one of my favorites, uh, pizza is always a, a, a big one, but we go to Chicago a lot. Yeah. Lou Malnati's pizza down in Chicago is my favorite. Is that a deep dish? It's a deep dish. Yeah. Is it like the super super deep dish? It's 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 good. It's big. Yeah. Right. It's uh it's it's got the I'm not a chunky tomato kind of guy, but their chunky tomatoes are so soft you just touch them with the fork and they just melt for you. It's Oh, I'm feeling that. Okay. We we, we come home with frozen ones. We can uh load up the cooler and bring some home. It's not the same as fresh in the restaurant, but it's, it's pretty good. So I'll probably make a few of those over the next few days. Okay. All right. Do you got a favorite pizza joint in uh, the cash? So what we did when, when uh, last March, when everything shut down, we decided that we were going to try every pizza, local pizza place 
in the area. So Oshkosh. I'm liking that. That's a that sounds like a challenge. So you're so you're speaking from uh, uh, what I will call a professional tasting <laughs> opinion. We went, we went all the way up to Kakana. We we did Appleton. I work up in the Nina Appleton area. We tried a lot of them up there. We tried a ton of them in Oshkosh. And if if there's any that I missed, I you know apologize. We've been we've been getting out there, but I guess in in Oshkosh we uh, you know I don't want to leave anybody out, but you know. Dr. Benzies is probably one of our favorites. West End. No doubt, no doubt. You know, so we've we've tried a lot. We've tried Cristiano's. My son asked for Legends the other day. We want to oh. go back there. So we're trying to we were trying to make sure with the way the restaurants and everything were going and, and people struggling for business and sit down business that we were staying local and, and trying to to do that. So there's a lot of great pizza places in the city though. Yeah, no doubt. I'm 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 gonna have to give a shout out. Uh I definitely did Legends Deep Dish. That's Doggone good deep dish legends you got going on there. I had to give them a big old shout out. And uh, me and my family, we kind of did the same thing during this time period where we, you know, we we're trying to support local and and um, and make sure we we want we want some of our businesses to be around after yeah. this was all said and done. I'm two of my favorites. We're lost uh, big time. We lost uh, Cranky Pats, which oh my god, I love Cranky Pats. Um, I love everything about them. They're the the staff the the people that were on the other side of the uh, bar, the servers, everything. And, um, and Durango's Durango's hands down was the most affordable Mexican lunch in town that tasted really good. (laughs) That I, that was my go-to. I felt good about it. I could take anybody that was the business lunch go-to like, and nobody was ever disappointed at Durango's. It was simple it was fast. It was consistent. I never had a bad plate, a bad meal there. I like that joint. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Shout out to Durango's and Cranky's. <laughs> All right. Um, next one, cocktail beer. So it, it's strange for someone in Wisconsin, but I actually don't drink alcohol. So I don't, uh, I don't have a go-to when it comes to that um, um, okay. cocktail or beer. So I'm more of just a... I don't even drink soda. It's mostly water, maybe a maybe a chai tea. But man, Christopher, you're making me feel real bad over here. <laughs> like I'm, I'm, I feel like I need to start watching my diet oh. and stuff. You're, you're, you're no, no, ju- <laughs> no judgment. People, people like it, and uh, I uh, more power to them. I just uh, it's not your thing. It's not my thing. Okay, fair enough. Um, Netflix. Yeah, so we we spent some time on on Netflix watching some shows. I think um, we just we just got done watching a, a movie called Yes Day last night with the kids. That was pretty good about uh, um, parents who always said no to their kids. So for one day they said yes to everything. Yeah. So it was uh, had Jennifer Garner in it as the mom. It was it was pretty good. Yeah, they have a. Uh, I think we spend more of our time though on. On Disney Plus, you know, okay. my, my kids, uh, you know, a lot of the movies are bringing out a lot of new shows. You know, we, we watch, we're big Star Wars fans, so we watch The Mandalorian, you know, and watch the last season when they released for Clone Wars. Um, if anybody's got a chance, the new Raya and the Last Dragon movie that came out on Disney Plus is fantastic. So okay. um, I think we spend more of our time that way, but. Uh, yeah, now, hey, anything that's streaming, I just, uh, Netflix is kind of like Kleenex. Yeah, it sure is. You know, no one says tissue. Yeah. So when you're talking streaming, people just say the word Netflix, and, yeah. and it, hopefully they take it wherever they go. But uh, I'm with you. I don't have Disney Plus yet, but I, I keep hearing about it, and it makes me kind of curious enough that I, I'm not quite sure if I'm ready to invest in it. But it seems like there's a lot of good stuff on there that people really, really like. Yeah, another series I had watched, I just follow, um, found it on ESPN+. Plus. Um, Chris Paul had done, um, he's doing, uh, focus on some of the HBCUs. Okay. And so he's, um, North Carolina central Lavelle Moton is the coach at North Carolina central. He's, he's amazing. And so I've heard him on interviews before and he's, he is Chris Paul and him kind of produce this, I think. And and so they interviewed some other people who went to some of the different HBCUs that are popular, okay. including Spike Lee, right. but they're, they're documenting their basketball season this year. They've had five episodes out so far. So they're doing a lot of behind the scenes work between, you know, for what they're going through, especially in a pandemic. But, 
um, you know, what they go through as, as an HBCU and everything. It's uh, that is an amazing show. I just watched a lot of the episodes four and five came out um, Tuesday night. So, okay. That sounds super interesting. I, I just want to send a shout out to every coach and, and athlete out there who's had to suffer because of the pandemic. Um, it's been rough on our athletes and in our sports. Yeah. All right. Um, next word, Amazon. Yeah, I think, uh, I think we've been doing our fair share of ordering through Amazon. It's, it's, it's hard when you, uh, it's hard not to, when you, when you can get the stuff in a couple of days, right? You can pretty much get everything from Amazon. It is amazing. So I've been buying some books lately, you know, been into some reading of some autobiographies and, yeah. and things. Um, I think we've been doing some of that and, you know, just miscellaneous stuff around the house. My, my son's birthday's coming up. So Uh-oh. bought him some stuff. I can't say it here in case he's listening, but you know, <laughs> bought some stuff on, uh, on Amazon. It's just, uh, I mean, you can buy everything. We, we bought, I'm going to redo my couch cushions. You know, you can buy, buy the foam <laughs> to redo your couch cushions on Amazon. It's amazing the stuff you can get. So. Hey, I'm feeling you on that. Um, I, Look, there's such a convenience to it. There's times that I'm sitting at work and I think of something like, oh, you know, we could really use one of these. Jump on the phone, bloop, 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 boom, it's here in two days. Uh, God bless Amazon Prime. <laughs> I I can't beat it, you know, right. right now. I mean, I do miss, no, I really don't. I don't miss uh, shopping in stores like that. I mean, uh, kind of a little bit. Um I kind of save money this way though, because you know what? I don't get caught up on the end cap and the sale, you know, where you pick up that extra, you walk by something and you're like, Oh man, I could, I don't really need that, but the price is so good and it's on sale. I think I'm just going to snag this and throw it in my cart. (laughs) So, yeah, I, I I think there's some things we're going to keep forever, you know, coming out of this pandemic and you know, it's, you realize how easy it can be not to go to stores now. You know, and so, but we like, got, we need to though. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I wish, I wish I didn't have to buy everything through Amazon. I wish there was, you know, local places and other things you could get some of this stuff from, but like they've gobbled everything up and they have everything. So it's hard, it's hard not to. And they get you with the prime, don't they? Yeah. You know, they, they definitely get you with the prime. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. Um, next word, children. Yeah, so I have um, talked about my own. I have two two boys, an uh, eight-year-old who's in third grade and a 12-year-old who's in sixth grade. Um, and I also have, a, you know, I got some nieces and nephews as well, but my, my I have a, a niece at um, freshman in high school as well. So, um, you know, I got I got kids and, and, and niece that are, you know, in all different levels of the school district right now. And so, you know, um, they mean a lot to me. You know, I... I, I I like to spend as much time with them. We, we go on trips together. We, this past year has been rough because we like to travel. Um, we go to, we go to a lot of USA soccer games. So anything when they're playing close to the area, you know, we, we take little three, four day trips. We drive somewhere new. We've been to Cleveland, Nashville, Kansas city, um, Chicago, multiple times, um, Minneapolis, Seattle, you know, we, we go, um, all over. And so as they get bigger, we're able to maybe travel a little more, maybe try to see some New York city, Boston, LA, some places we haven't been before. So it's kind of fun to be able to go see a game, but also, you know, hit up a, hit up a museum or, uh, you know, something like that. We were in Toledo a few years ago and they have a, the imagination station. It's uh, kind of like a children's museum, but it's, everybody can partake adults too. All, right. all sorts of fun activities that you can do. You know, you're riding a bike that's weighted down across this like zip line kind of a thing. And yeah, you talk about weight balance and everything else. It's just, uh, you know, it's the fun things you find when you're driving around and, you know, experiencing the country. So it's fun. I've gone to, um, I've gone to a couple of the U S women's soccer games and that is a good time. Yeah. That's just a good vibe. Um, that's in there. And maybe it's because, well, um, you know, it's, it's a national team. Yep. So the the outpouring of patriotism and the stuff that's that's there is just it's a fantastic feeling. Yeah, we we my wife and I started going in two thousand three, two 
2004, 2004. And when we first started going to games, there wasn't the following there is now. We would be in a stadium with a few thousand people maybe. Um, we went to Columbus to watch a game against Jamaica, and it, it, there was hardly anybody there. Um, and now, you know, and then eventually when you play the bigger teams, like you'd play Mexico, you'd play Honduras. And oh, yeah. Poland and Chicago, you know, you get outnumbered big time. Oh yeah. And now the popularity's grown. And so now a lot of times, you know, it's it's more red, white, and blue in the stadium. And it's a pretty cool feeling to be, you know, patriotic in those moments to, you know, hear the anthem and and uh, you know, watch your team and feel the passion. Cause it is it is kind of a national pride thing at that point, you know, it's it's fun. It's no doubt. I think uh, it's just a Definitely one of the funner sporting events that I've gone to in person. Um, I'm a person that a lot of times I go to the sporting event and then I, I think to myself, I, I miss announcers. <laughs> I miss, I miss replay. <laughs> I've, I've, I've done that at football games when I went a few times and I was like, you know, this is better on TV, but soccer I is the one sport that I much prefer in person. You get a feel for it a lot different. I, I agree with you. All right. Um, one last word, education. So uh, education is, um, well, I listened to a, um, or I saw a quote, the, the great college basketball coach John Chaney had died this past year, and he coached at Temple for a really long time. Um, he talked about how, you know, for a lot of people, education is is the way out. It's it's such an important piece to helping our society grow and understand each other. And for me, it took a long time, I think, to understand the importance of education. Um, I always knew I was going to go to college. I went to UW Oshkosh, um, just kind of figured I'd go there. Thought about transferring, going somewhere else. Um, but they had the degree I liked, and I, I was a big, passionate fan of history and religious studies. And so, you know, my school down the road from where I grew up had, you know, fun program. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it in the fact that it was classes that challenged me. It was conversations that were fun. And you had a lot of diverse people in those classes. And it um, didn't necessarily train me to come out of it with a degree in a field. I didn't come out with a degree in finance. And I went into finance and I've been in finance ever since. You know, it, it kind of, it, it, it just showed me the importance of that education to to challenge yourself, to put yourself in uncomfortable places. And, you know, for me, like I'm now in healthcare, I bounced around a few things after, after I graduated college, I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know, um, you know, what I was, I thought about going to grad school. I thought about doing some other, um, items. Um, and it, sometimes I, I wish I would have, but you know, life happens and, and, you know, things, things get going. And, uh, but, I wouldn't change what I went to school for. You know, I, I am a better person because of what I did and, and, and that, and that's probably in my life, one of the more proud items I, I have that, you know, graduating from college, getting my degree, you know, it's anybody who graduates college and gets that, that next level degree. I mean, took a lot of work, took a lot of determination. And I think there's something to be said for that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I couldn't agree with you more, uh, as in a fellow, uh, Oshkosh alum, uh, getting them degrees are no joke. There's a lot of hard work that goes into it. And, you know, at the end of the day, as much pressure, and I do think that uh, education has a cultural change that's happening where um, I would call it the, the specialization of education, right, where everybody um, wants an expert. And jobs don't have training like they used to you know training is an expense and if it's an expense that a lot of jobs have cut so they they expect your training to occur while you are in college um so i mean uh there's definitely there's a there's there's a shift that is happening but you know what college was supposed to do was to teach you how to critically think yeah, that's um, one of my favorite people to listen to is Neil deGrasse Tyson, the astrophysicist. Oh, yeah. He's, he's on uh, Cosmos. And, uh, like Neil. Yeah, <laughs> if, if, if anybody hasn't listened to him or found his podcast, Star Talk, or anything, I would I would recommend it. That He is um, very intelligent and in a way that's um, receivable by, by, you know, other people. He, he, he really can talk 
um, and put things into perspective. I mean, considering he's talking about astrophysics and all a bunch of other stuff that a lot of times over my head, he puts it in a way that you can really understand. But he talks about school isn't about memorization. It's not about test scores. It's not about being able to, 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 to learn what year this happened or that happened. It's how did you get to the answer? How can you find it? And I talk to my kids about that. It's, it's not about learning what certain things are. It's learning how to find it and how right. to ask those right questions. And sometimes for me, it's, it's, um, it's not the answer that's the most important. It's the question that's the most important. And, and I mean, running for school board, I get asked a lot of times, what would you do here? And, and a lot of times my answer is, I would ask the question. I would bring in the people that are affected by this and let's have a conversation and we can figure some things out. I'm not going to sit here and say I have the answers for everything because right. that, that limits your ability to then change your mind. And we see in politics, people know they're wrong. They still won't change their mind because it's a pride thing, right? And so I don't want to be there. I, I want to be in a place where we can, we can change our minds, we can have conversations, and we don't have to be tied to something. I agree. Um, I don't even know if it's a pride thing sometimes. Sometimes I think it's... Um Political safety. People Absolutely. people are a little scared because they're trying to protect their position. But, I mean, I am such a firm believer that at the end of the day, as long as you are truly, you, the point of a position to me is you are an elected official to represent your constituency. And as long as you're true blue to that, and you're not just representing a part of the constituency, you have to go and listen to Everyone, right? Everyone has a voice. Everyone needs to be heard. Um, that doesn't mean to say you can, you decisions will never appease everyone, but if you can at least get all the ideas or at least have understanding about all the parties involved, that's where, that is where critical thinking happens and educated mm -hmm. solutions are found. Right. I couldn't, couldn't agree more when it comes to, you know, how we, uh, I mean, you know, 70% or, or even higher, I've heard of the, of the country, you know, we're, we're a fan of the, uh, the recovery act that just passed, you know, the stimulus and all the other stuff coming out 70 something percent of people, you yes. know, and, and yet 70% of our representatives did not vote that way. It wasn't representative of what the people want. And so it's, Sometimes we get lost between what we're really being, you know, what we want to do and, and representing our community and, and doing it a way to help people. You know, sometimes things get in the way of that. Right. I, I think we've gotten outside. Like, it feels like we're doing teams. <laughs> and politics shouldn't be teams. Correct. Politics is people. Government is people. Um, it should, the party should never be more important than the people you represent. Correct. Absolutely. And, and, and I think, you know, we, we live in an area that, you know, you know, is, is more conservative by nature, but we have, you know, a, a, a Democrat who continues to win state assembly, you know, and, um, you know, that, that's kind of part of that. It's, it's people get to know 